Okay, I'm going to show you some prophecies about the nation of Israel that totally destroy replacement theology. And when these scriptures were brought up to one of Stephen Anderson's little cult members, um, he tried to say that, oh, those are for us, those are for us Gentile Christians. Now I'm going to show you that this logic, that the prophecies about Israel are for Gentile Christians, because I've heard this, this argument used by some of the replacement theology heretics in the new IFB cult, and some other groups too, that, oh, the prophecies for Israel are now given to the church, basically. And I'm going to show you that that argument does not work. But here are some prophecies I'm going to show you that totally destroy replacement theology and prove that God is not done with the nation of Israel. Because some of what is written in these prophecies have not been fulfilled yet. Some of them have, but some of them have not. Okay, let's get started. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by, sorry, took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the new with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be the God, and they shall be my people. And they and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Now, this is talking about Gentile Christians. When did God bring Gentile Christians out of Egypt and make a covenant with them? It's talking about the Jews. This is a prophecy that has been fulfilled because they are in the land of Israel, but parts of it has not, have not been fulfilled yet. God has not made the new covenant with Israel yet. So it's future events. God is not done with the nation of Israel. Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 36 to 40. And now therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city, whereof ye say, it will be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence, behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger, and in my fury, and in great wrath, and I bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to do all safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart, one way, and one way, that they, they, they may fear me forever, for the good of them, and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and I will not turn away from them, that, that do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts, and they shall not depart from me. So you can't say if this is written to Christians, well, if this is written to Gentile Christians, when were, we when were we driven into all countries by God and then gathered out of those countries by God? Again, it's talking about the Jews. And in talk with regards to the new covenant, you can read Hebrews chapter 8, verses 18, sorry, verse 8 to 12. God makes a new covenant with the nation of Israel. You see the New Testament, one of the, one of the other lies from a replacement theology heretics like Anderson and his little cult is that covenant and testament are the same thing. And they'll say, well, do you believe in a third testament for the Jews? No, New Covenant and New Testament are not the same thing. The New Testament is for everyone. The New Covenant is for Israel. So God makes a future covenant with the nation of Israel. He's not done with them. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 to 28. Therefore I say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do this not for your sake, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, and I will be sanctified, and I, when I will, shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. And I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, while I cleanse you. And a new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, to cause, sorry, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land which that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my, pe my people, and I will be your God. 
And again, if this is for Gentile Christians, if this is talking about Gentile Christians, when were we gathered out of all nations and brought to Israel? And when, when was our covenant made with our fathers? Gentile Christians, you know, I'm, I'm a Slavic. I'm from Slavic Russia. So obviously I'm, I'm of Slavic background. Uh, the, my ancestors, my Slavic ancestors, weren't brought out of Egypt by God. They were not they didn't have a covenant made with them by God. My Slavic ancestors were following Slavic neo-paganism. Sorry, Slavic paganism, not neo-paganism. They were following Slavic paganism. They were heathens. They were not they were not in some kind of covenant relationship with God. This is talking about the nation of Israel. Now, I want to get this out there first of all, is that while the Israelites, the physical Israelites, according to these scriptures and many others, are still God's people and God still has plans for them in the future, the religion of Judaism is satanic. I don't deny that. The religion of Judaism is a wicked antichrist false religion. The Talmud is a very wicked satanic set of books. The Talmud says that Jesus Christ is in hell. It calls Mary a bastard. Sorry, it calls Jesus a bastard. It calls Mary a whore. It says that Jesus was conceived through adultery. A lot of wicked stuff. It says that Christians are prostitutes and all this other stuff. So obviously the Talmud is a wicked set of books. The Talmud, I've said this before, the Talmud is only good for fuel for the campfire, meaning the Talmud should be burned. I don't deny that. Judaism is a wicked, satanic, false religion, and the Talmud is only good when it's fuel for the fireplace. That's all it is. That being said, as satanic and wicked as Judaism and the Talmud are, because again, 1 John chapter 2, verse 22 to 23, uh, are clear that denying the Son is denying the Father. And he that denies the Son, the same hath not the Father also. It's Antichrist. So Judaism is an Antichrist religion. I don't deny that. The Talmud is an Antichrist set of books. It is blasphemous trash. But that being said, that does not mean that the Israelites are not God's people. Because you see in Ezekiel 36 that they're profaning the name of God among the heathen. You go to Israel, there's lots of blasphemy towards Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, going on in Israel. They're profaning the name of the Lord. That's the whole point for the time of Jacob's trouble. You see, Christians don't go through the, the tribulation period. It's for the Jews. God is having to chase in the Jews and having to basically confirm that Jesus Christ is their Messiah to them. The time of Jacob's trouble, you can just say, well, you know, the Jews are wicked. They blaspheme Jesus Christ. Yes, I know. And again, that's the point of this time period. So they are profaning the name of God among the heathen. Judaism is a wicked, false religion. That's the, reason, that's the whole reason for the time of Jacob's trouble. God's having to chase in them and punish them. And at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, they will be saved. That's how Romans 11 says, all Israel shall be saved. So don't be deceived by replacement theology. It is Roman Catholic, this doctrine. It comes from the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, Roman Catholicism, just like Judaism, is an antichrist, pagan, false religion that denies and rejects and hates the Jesus Christ of the Bible. So don't be deceived by replacement theology. It is a Roman Catholic, satanic heresy. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.